So now that I've given an overview of the Java function functional interface, let's go ahead and walk through case study EX9. And this shows how the Java function functional interface can be applied in conjunction with concurrent hash map to compute cache and retrieve large prime numbers. In other words, do those memoization techniques that we talked about before. As always, you can find this code in my modern Java GitHub repository in the EX9 project in the FP folder. Here we are in that project. Let's take a look at the EX9 file. And you can see how we're going to use the Java function functional interface along with both object-oriented and functional programming features. In my experience, Java works best when you combine object-oriented and functional programming features together rather than trying to use them in isolation. So let's take a look at the example. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to create ourselves a field called m pending item count, which is an atomic integer given an initial value of zero. And we do this so we can update this count concurrently in, in the context of different threads. We then go ahead and create a list of randomly generated large integers. And we'll see how to do that in a second. The main entry point into the test program makes an instance of the EX9 class and then passes it argv and calls the run method. And when we call the run method, as you'll see, it's going to go ahead and uh, run the tests. So let's first take a look and see what the constructor does. It parses any command line arguments we might want to give to set things like the maximum value and the number of items we want to generate. Otherwise, we'll just take the defaults. And then we call the generate random data method. You can see what this does. This is kind of a fun little method that's going to go ahead and create a new random object and then use Java streams capabilities to create a stream of count large random integers within this range between max value minus count and max value. And the reason for doing it within this range is to generate some duplicates. We box each of these primitive integers to be an integer, and then we collect these things into a list. And in modern Java, we can just say do list, and assuming we've got the right version of the code installed, that's a little bit more concise way of doing things. So I think I like to keep it like that. So that's how we generate the random data. Now here's the test program. You can see we're going to run this a couple of times. We're going to run it concurrently, and we're also going to run it sequentially. And you can see here when we do this, we're going to time the results of running things concurrently and running them sequentially. And to do that, we're going to use a little class that I developed called the run timer, which is used to simplify the computation of uh, how long methods take to run. I use a hash map to keep track of certain things. And then down here, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the value that we want to compute. And we're going to start the timer, which will take a snapshot of the current time. We're then going to go ahead and run the operation. This uses a supplier, which we're going to talk about later. That's another functional interface. Then we stop the timing, and we stick the execution time into the map with the name of the test that we ran. And as you can see here, we're going to time two tests. They both use concurrent hash map. One runs concurrently, one runs sequentially. The differentiation is the parameter that's passed in to run test. So let's go take a look at run test. So here's run test. We're going to take the, the prime cache, which is our concurrent hash map. A flag indicates whether we're running concurrently or running sequentially. And then we're going to go ahead and print out that we're going to run the test with a certain number of or a certain number of iterations. We're going to reset the counter so we can start keeping track of things at the beginning. And then we're going to have some fun here using a stream of random large numbers. So this is going to use the Java streams framework. We talked a little bit about this. We'll cover it in more detail in other parts of the course. Here's publish random integers. What this does is it is going to go ahead and take the random integers that we created and convert them into a stream. So now we have a stream of integers. And depending on the parameter that's passed in, we're either going to run this stream sequentially or in parallel. If the parameter is true, we run this as a parallel stream. And then we go ahead and return the stream. So we've got either a parallel or a sequential stream at this point. The peak operation just prints out some diagnostics if we're debugging. And then here's where things actually get fun. We call the map intermediate operation, which is going to check to see whether or not this number is prime using the prime cache as a memoization mechanism. So you can see check if prime 
goes ahead and will use the prime cache compute if absent method to check to see if there's already a value associated with this prime candidate. If there's not, and there won't be the first time in, then we check to see whether it's prime by using the is prime method. And as you can see here, the is prime method performs a very thorough but somewhat brute force algorithm to burn a lot of CPU time so we can see the benefits of running things in parallel. And this will actually determine whether or not the number is prime. Uh, this is not as efficient as other algorithms, but the purpose here is just to burn, burn time. So this computes whether something's prime. The second time that the compute if absent method is called for a prime candidate, it'll just return the value that was stored the first time. So that's the memoization technique and the cache in, in action. We then go ahead and make a new prime result, prime result being this record that keeps track of the prime candidate and the smallest factor, which is zero if it's prime and non-zero, or greater than zero if it's non-prime, it's its smallest factor. And we bundle it up and pass that back as the result of check if prime. So you can see we end up now with a stream of prime results, and then we go ahead and handle each of those results in a for each call. This is a terminal operation that will call the handle result method reference for every different um, prime result that we've got. And here we just go ahead and print the results out, depending whether we're debugging, whether we got a prime number or not. So that's essentially what how the test works. Let's go ahead and run the test. All we have to do is just click the, the run start button and it'll start running. And as you'll see here, it's going to do this computation, sets of computations twice. The first time it's going to do it using the, uh, the mechanisms based on uh, parallel processing. And you can see that because you can see that the threads are printed out here and we have different threads doing the computations. I'm just printing out whether something's a prime number just to keep the amount of output down. And then we run the tests again, except this time we're doing it sequentially. And as you can see, it's taking a lot longer to run because of course, sequential programming, especially on a very uh, efficient multi-core processor like my MacBook Pro, which has a 10 core, I think it's a Max, A1 Max or something like that. So it's much, much faster to do things concurrently. And in fact, when we take a look at the results, you can see that we ended up with it um, much faster when doing things concurrently than doing things sequentially. And if we had actually run this program a couple times and had a chance to let the threads kind of warm up a bit, it would be even faster. So this is an example of how to show the use of the Java function functional interface in the context of the use of Java concurrent hash map, as well as concurrent programming using Java parallel streams, which makes the whole computation much more efficient and much simpler to program and debug than trying to do this in a more manual way with lower level mechanisms like like using Java threads or using the Java executor framework and so on.